All right, I think I've got enough battery here. We're gonna try a conversation while I ride. Uh, I mentioned in the vlog, as I was like debating doing this, <laughs> um, I mentioned that it won't happen on trails like often. Um, there'll probably be more street stuff. The rest of this tra trail is pretty chill though. I'm on the way back and uh, I just feel like doing it now. Especially because I drove to the top of the van. You don't need this information. Anyway, what, uh, what I want to talk about, I don't really have a, a name for it yet, but I guess <clears throat> it sparks a little bit from the conversation last week and also something my counselor brought up, which also has to do with last week because we're delving into like how to cope with sadness and stuff and noticing um, or just discussing how pain can manifest through anger or sadness, how I've dealt with anger, how I have um, matured in how I deal with anger and how I need help trying to deal with sadness, but just noticing the differences and stuff like that. So anyway, that's where this is coming from, kind of directly from last week. But one of the things that she mentioned was how sadness could be a gift or they're just like trying to notice how, it's funny cause she kind of like ninja it in there about like basically being really positive about these things that seem negative. Uh, but yeah, just looking at things in this positive light, she didn't frame it that way at all. Cause if she did, I don't know if I would have been as receptive, which is just funny cause I'm realizing that now. <laughs> but yeah, she just talked about like, what are the gifts that sadness can bring us? like. Uh, and if we reframe it in a certain way, like maybe we can cope with that better because we realize what it's telling us. And so I started thinking about that a bit. And um, oh, I'm trying to remember the words, the words that she said, because I took notes and now I obviously don't have them with me and I don't remember them. I didn't look at them after I took them was the problem. So um, basically, she was saying like sadness slows you down. It's a time for reflection, a time for letting go. How I'm interpreting that is it's an indicator that something needs to change. And when I started thinking about that, I was like, well, yeah, so is anger. <laughs> anger is also an indicator that something needs to change because both of those things come from a source of pain. Both of those things are, uh, yeah, Pain is the source. So if you, you know, uh, I don't know, if you get a headache, it's usually an indicator of something. Your body's telling you like, yo, you screwed up. You're dehydrated. You didn't drink any water today. Uh, or, you know, you get a pain response when you like cut your finger or something and your body's like, yo, we don't like that. Let's not do that again. I mean, that's also a way of saying we need to, to change. We need to not be doing finger cutting activities because we don't like it. <laughs> so, I mean, our body's responding to pain, uh, physical, emotional, mental, whatever, in these certain ways. But when it comes to the emotional, that's where we need to kind of decipher um, because, I would say for most people, you know, getting a paper cut feels relatively the same. But, uh, and again, how we react to that would vary a little bit. Some people don't have as much of a, a pain threshold or tolerance to physical pain and other people have higher tolerances and whatever, right? So there's still some differentiation there from person to person. But I find especially with emotional and mental stuff, um, you know, we react differently. Some people want to express that or they have, whatever, we all have different coping mechanisms um, and what works for us to deal with those things, to deal with emotional pain. And so that's, I guess, kind of what I'm analyzing is with, with anger, what I've been reflecting on today, because I've been thinking about that a lot and how, 
how I've improved on how I deal with anger and like trying to find a balance and be like, it's okay to be angry, but how I express that in the past has not been okay. And the amount of anger I've perpetuated for myself has not been okay. And it's been disruptful to my life and those people around me. So I need to do things to slow myself down a bit and like just whatever, chill. Rewiring the synapses and just like how I respond to stimuli. And you know, one of the things is that it usually takes me exposure to that stimuli in order to have an opportunity to make those changes, right? Like I could do a lot of things in my mind and in theory, but without putting them into practice, my Pavlovian responses still might go back to what they were doing, right? Um, I still might do the same thing I was doing last time I was confronted with that scenario. Because even though I've changed things in my mind and heart, I actually haven't changed the way my body or my physical brain like responds to that, right? Uh, if you're conditioned or if you've conditioned or nurtured yourself into, you know, screaming every time you get a paper cut and then you realize that's ridiculous and it's not a big deal and you can calm down. Well, I mean, the next time you get a paper cut, you might default immediately to screaming. Uh, I don't know, you know, but over the course of like, oh, if you get a bunch of paper cuts in a row, you've got time in there, an opportunity to change, to reflect and to apply the things that you realized you need to put in place and just not scream, right? And just like get quieter and quieter and just eventually maybe you don't say anything and just take a breath or, or whatever, you know? Uh, so that's kind of how I would say that I, I definitely work and it's tough because sometimes, take example, uh, arguments with a partner. They can get pretty heated for me. Um, I definitely can get loud. It's something that I've been working on a lot and I reflected on a lot and I've made a lot of changes. And one of the reasons I was successful at making changes as bad as it sounds is because I was in scenarios where there was a lot of arguing and there was opportunity to apply those changes over time. Now, I have not had the same amount of opportunity in the past, like, I don't know, eight, nine months or whatever, however long it's been, I just haven't had that exposure. So I'm wondering now, like in a new relationship, we haven't had an argument or a fight or really any ill feelings for the most part. Like it just hasn't happened. So I'm wondering, well, how am I going to react? How am I going to apply, you know, and also I'm reacting to different stimuli because it's a different person and they react and act a different way. So you kind of have to relearn stuff sometimes, but this is heading towards the sadness bit. So again, anger, I've done a lot of work on. I'm very well, well acquainted and familiar and sadness in this context is kind of new trying to work through that so it's talking about the gifts of sadness and uh she was my my counselor was was talking about how you know i can't remember the words she used but i think they were all started with the same letter i just don't even remember the letter i can't remember one of the words but yeah it was just about like calm and stuff because i was saying like you know when i cope with anger like anger gives me energy and sadness kind of takes that energy away so I don't know what to, I don't know how to, it's not like I can focus my energy into a positive action like I can with anger. Because sadness doesn't give me energy to play with, it, it's subtractive, not additive. And I think I discussed that in the last conversation that'll be linked here if you hadn't watched or listened to it or whatever. Uh, so, um, talking about the gifts of sadness and if it is forcing me to slow down, it is forcing me, because I don't have energy, forcing me to reflect, forcing me to look at the things I have to let go. Um, and, and I was thinking about that and pondering about that and realizing that like, okay, uh, that both of these things come from pain and 
they manifest and express themselves differently in, in the way like I feel the pain either through sadness or anger depending on what type of pain it is uh, also how I have decided to nurture myself into responding to pain and also recognize what it is like legitimately and that that anger is coming from me being hurt usually so recognizing that um, has been part of changing my responses because I've been able to change how I even or how pain even manifests in me is changing because anger was so destructive because I didn't know how to deal with it and then I came to a balance where I could deal with it a lot better but it's still something that that feels more destructive than sadness then again sadness as I've exp expressed before is like so destructive for me and that's why I'm trying to figure it out so anyway both of these things seem to be telling me that something needs to change is what we're circling back to pain equals need to change and I've just been thinking about like again that being I don't know if I want to call it a gift but just recognizing if I'm in emotional pain I don't want to be in that place so what is it that I need to do to change so to wrap things up I've just been thinking like anger you know again I can also change that response over time and not be angry about things and just recognize it as oh I am hurt and maybe I could do that without feeling as sad as well not feeling angry about it not feeling sad about it as, as much not to the extremes that I have in the past and just say I am hurt and that's it that's what that is it is pain why do I feel that way what can I do to not feel that way aka what needs to change and sometimes that is going to be cutting people out of your life changing your environment maybe you're in an unhealthy environment and that's why you're in pain and hurt because you're being abused you need to change that environment and sometimes as I'm also realizing uh, I need to change my own behavior so I don't react the way I'm reacting to things that don't matter as much that I, sh I just shouldn't give that much power uh, like who cares if someone doesn't signal I mean it does matter sometimes uh, but sometimes it doesn't and I can just let go of that quicker I can like I can't unsee it but I can definitely change how I react to it and that's kind of where I came to today is just recognizing pain as a communicator for something needs to change and I don't know why it took me so long to get to that place, but I'm really happy I got there. And I'm going to continue doing work on myself. So with that, see you on another time.